All right. Um, uh, as Sharuk said, I'm Kate Thibault. Um, I'm a vertebrate ecologist at the National Ecological Observatory Network. And I was a grad student here at UNM with Jim until 2006. And today I want to talk about a brief overview of the observatory and also uh, in the context of um, the fact that uh, Jim's contributions to ecology uh, have essentially laid the foundations um, for, that have led now to the realization of this first continental scale observatory. And that his work continues to um, contribute to the design of the observatory and hopefully ultimately to the success of the observatory. Um, so in 1977, when trapping began at Portal, um, much of ecological research, as we all know, looked like this. And similarly, when I started uh, graduate school, my worldview was quite limited, and I uh, just wanted to study bats. And Jim was a bit more successful with me, apparently, than with Sharuk. <laughs> and my time at Portal uh, really uh, opened up uh, my mind to thinking about the world in a more general way. Um, and as uh, Morgan so eloquently describes, um, Portal has taught me and uh, the ecological community about the importance of long-term research and um, its flexibility to answer a lot of important questions. And similarly, uh, Jim's work in, in macroecology, the development of it, um, has had a profound impact on how I think about the world and the ecological community does. And one of the really important things that I learned in my work in macroecology is that, um, although I love mammals, birds can be kind of interesting as well. Um, and so, but one of the reasons they're really interesting is that um, there are these great large scale data sets that can be used um, analyzed in combination to provide a really powerful tool to ask really general questions about how communities are structured. And so this is an example of um, the distribution of size of individuals in bird communities. Um, and I don't have any time to tell you about what you're actually looking at, but it's cool. Um, so in my mind, the observatory is really a marriage of these two approaches to science the intense on the ground sampling of a number of systems, but repeated hopefully sufficiently to allow for us to scale up and get a continental understanding of pattern and process. So for those of you who may not be aware of how NEON is approaching um, its many challenges, we have uh, split up the country into 20 eco-climatic domains. In each of those, there's a core site that will be sampled for 30 years, a whole suite of measurements I don't have time to get into, um, and then two relocatable sites that theoretically are going to move around every five to ten years. Um, and the portion of the observatory that I work on, um, given my experiences, is the terrestrial organismal ecology. And that the observatory has, through many years of development, uh, settled upon six taxonomic groups that we'll be sampling, and we refer to these as sentinels, sentinel taxa, as sentinels of change. And um, we have plants, soil microbes, ground beetles, mosquitoes, and then the taxa that I am charged with working on are the birds and the small mammals. And so the basic idea is to sample all of these taxonomic groups at roughly the same location over time. And so that's what this schematic is representing. You have um, mammal grids nested in bird point count grids. And then you have plant uh, productivity, diversity, insect sampling, uh, soil microbe sampling distributed in the same landscape. And so to um, just give you a flavor of some of the things that we have to work with. So I'm charged with basically figuring out how to capture interannual variation across the continent at all these 60 sites and all of these aspects of small mammal ecology. And so that hopefully the observatory in this full suite of measurements will be able to address questions about how these dynamics relate to major drivers of change. 
And so I'm really excited that I have um, such an incredible data set like Portal um, to help inform how I'm going to actually sample all of these sites. Um, and so I, I can use data like Portal, which obviously are hard to come by, to address some really simple questions like how frequently do we actually need to sample a small mammal community to get a picture, an idea of that community. Um, and so this is just looking at cumulative species richness at Portal. And so the red is if we had only sampled Portal twice a year in the spring and in the fall, as you often see in mammal studies, we would have actually ended up missing three of the species um, that have occurred on the site over time. And similarly, I have to ask, how much of the landscape do I actually need to trap to characterize it? Um, and here, if this is just looking at the control plots, um, if we had only tracked um, two of the ten control plots over time, again, and this is every month, we would have again missed three of the, these really rare species. Um, so it's exciting to me that I have this opportunity to use these questions, these, these data to answer these questions, and I think it's gonna, they're going to prove to be really valuable to the design of the observatory. So of course I really want to thank Jim for making ecology a much more exciting place today. Um, and I also wanted to give him an opportunity to let me know how the hell I do actually sample 60 sites for 30 years for small mammals and breeding birds. So uh, I'll expect an answer by the end of the day. <laughs> and then of course all of my other wonderful uh, folks in the Brown Lab and all of the people who have helped throughout the years to collect all the portal data. Thank you. Thank you.